Hello, I am Arun Gidu, and for the last 30 plus years, I've been working with either computer systems or supply chain computer systems or as a supply chain practitioner. In this video, we will discuss how we can automate outlier detection and suppression. So first, what are outliers? Simply put, they are numbers that are outside the norm in a range of numbers. And the second thing to note is that there is no mathematical definition for outliers. Even if we were to define outliers as a number that let's say is 2.5 standard deviations from the mean, the outliers themselves change the mean and standard deviation. We will see with an Excel example how we can use Huber's method to prevent the ground from shifting beneath our feet as we detect and suppress outliers. So why is outlier detection important? I will illustrate this with an example from inventory management. In inventory management, you are required to forecast demand and then calculate how much inventory to buy and how much safety stock you need to have so that when customer orders uh, comes in, you have adequate inventory to satisfy the varying demand, but not excess inventory that ties up more than the required amount of working capital. Or in other words, you want to have as little inventory as possible to serve the customer at the level needed to be competitive in the marketplace. First, let us have a quick primer on inventory management. Two of the many questions you need to answer in inventory management are one, what is the future demand? And two, how much safety stock should I carry? Let us first look at demand. To forecast demand, that is future demand, probably the most important piece of information is historical demand, what has happened in the past. This historical demand could be riddled with outliers, which makes calculation of average historical demand difficult. If you have a few products to handle, then maybe eyeing the historical demand, identifying and suppressing the outliers is easy enough. Many ERP systems will have screens to do precisely this. But if you have hundreds of thousands of products for which you need to forecast demand, then manually identifying the outliers and suppressing them become impractical. Now let's talk about safety stock. How much safety stock you need to, you need to have is informed not only by forecasted demand, but also forecasted variation in demand. Forecasted lead time to make or procure the product and possible variation in this lead time. We have seen that the demand data can have outliers. If you are using historical lead times to forecast lead times, then lead time data can also have outliers, which we need to take care of. Otherwise, our calculated safety stock will be much higher than needed and we will have excess inventory that will quickly become obsolete. So it's important to clean historical demand data and historical lead time data before we use this data to forecast demand or calculate required safety stock to fulfill the varying demand. Let us see with an Excel example how we can use Huber's method to detect outliers and suppress their effect programmatically or in an automated fashion. Okay, so let's see what we have here. So here we have 36 uh, observations and data for them. Uh, let's assume uh, for this discussion, this is uh, demand data for the last 36 periods. Uh, each period could be a week or uh, could be bi-weekly or monthly demand. And what we see is this data does not have any outliers because I created this uh, data uh, using this function which is telling uh, Excel to create 
a, a normally distributed data with a mean of uh, 100 and a standard deviation of 20. So this data does not have any outliers. And, uh, and the regular calculations of uh, mean and standard deviation gives you 101.89, 19.45, which is close to our uh, mean of 100 and standard deviation of 20. And I've captured this here so that we can compare this when we change and introduce outliers to this data. And the Huber's method of calculating uh, shows that uh, the mean is 101, which is very close to the actual data, and then the standard deviation is slightly higher, but still within uh, range. Now, let's see what happens when we introduce outliers. So let's change this data from 92 to, let's say, 500. That clearly is an outlier. And if you look at it, our uh, regular way of calculating reacts to this outlier. The standard deviation from 19.45 has jumped to 68.19, which is a 250% increase or 250% error from the what should be the data. And then the mean has also increased. Now let's see how the Huber mean and standard deviation gets calculated once I press this button. And you see that it does not have that much of a uh, effect on this. So it is much more stable and it has suppressed the effect of this outlier. Now let's introduce another outlier. Uh, and I will make this data from 107 to 10. So that is also clearly an outlier. And let's see what happens here. Uh, of course, uh, this reacts strongly and the standard deviation has now increased and the error is now 261%. I think the last time it was around 240 or 250%. So standard deviation has increased even more. And let's see how the Huber calculation. So the Huber calculation is much more stable. The mean is around the same. There's almost no error in the mean or no change from the gold standard that we set, that is data with no errors. And whereas here, we have an 8% error in the mean. And what is much more disturbing is that the standard deviation is a very high in the regular way of calculating. It reacts strongly to these outliers. Whereas the Huber's method suppresses the outliers and gives you uh, the mean and standard deviation as if these outliers did not exist which is a good thing because that is how we want to calculate a safety stock based on uh, outliers or sorry, uh, on uh, numbers which have not reacted strongly to outliers. Uh, in my previous slide, I had said that we can use the Z value uh, to identify outliers. Uh, we can create our own rules. And if you look here, uh, these, of course, because we introduced these two outliers, we know that these are outliers. And using the Z value from the Huber uh, standard deviation and mean, it correctly uh, identifies these two as outliers because the Z value is greater than 2.5. Here to the Z value is um, less than minus 2.5. Basically, it's more than 2.5 standard deviations away from the mean, this data value. So it, this one correctly identifies the uh, outliers. If we were to use uh, the regular uh, calculation, the Z value here is 5.54. In this case, it correctly identifies it. But here it misses it because it thinks that 10 is only 1.43 standard deviations away from this inflated standard deviations. And therefore, as you can see in the simple example, uh, detecting outliers uh, using the regular method is much more difficult and sometimes quite impossible. Whereas using the Huber's method, you can identify the outliers. So now we have all the data and the calculations that we need to either uh, suppress the effects of outliers and or detect outliers and then remove them from calculations or whatever uh, uh, we choose to do. So let's see here. Uh, this is the gold standard mean and uh, standard deviation, which is what we, uh, you know, with the numbers that we created. This was the 
uh, mean and that was the standard deviation without any outliers. With uh, Huber's method, even with the outliers, these two numbers are close to these two. So we could use these in our safety start and demand calculations. Or we can use, because we have detected uh, the outliers, we can ignore them and use the mean and standard deviation without the outliers. In which case, as you see here, that's pretty close to. So we could either use this or this in our safety stock and demand uh, forecast calculations. And we will be much more close to what the actual demand is than if you were to use these calculations. So we have a lot of choices here for calculating the mean and standard deviations. We could um, use this, which is the mean without mean and standard deviation without the outliers. Or we can just use this. Uh, or if there is no difference or very little difference between the standard deviation calculated by the regular method and the standard deviation calculated by the Huber method, then we know that there are not too many outliers, then we can just use this. But if the difference is considerable or significant between the standard deviations by Huber method and the standard deviations by the regular method, then you know that there are outliers and either you need to use this or this method of uh, calculation. So let me uh, summarize what we have here. When to use uh, Huber's method? When the difference between the standard deviation here and the standard deviation here is significant. Then we use Huber's method because we know that there are outliers in the data. Now, whether to use this uh, mean and standard deviation or whether to use this mean and standard deviation, it's up to you uh, because they are pretty close, uh, our calculated uh, demand and uh, safety stock will not be that much different. One other thing uh, we should not lose track of is the automated uh, or programmatic calculations. So this is just for one part number. And if you have one or 10, you know, manually doing all of this uh, would be easy enough. But if we have 100,000 part numbers, then we need to be able to do this automatically so that at the end of our calculation, we have data for every part number. So part number one, we know what the mean and standard deviation is. For part number two, we know. And for part number 100,000, we know that. So because the program has gone through every uh, observation for every part number and made the decision as to which mean and standard deviation to use and therefore, consequently calculate what should be the other inventory management uh, parameters like EOQ, uh, safety stock, and so on. One other question that might come up is, hey, this 500 is the actual demand. How do we uh, take care of this? Uh, so if you have such a question, please leave them in the comment section and I will answer them. Um, I can think of at least two ways of doing this. But if you are interested, please leave a comment. So in conclusion, if we want accurate forecast, we need to take care of outliers in historical data. If we want to calculate inventory management parameters like safety stock and EOQ in an automated manner, this is especially needed if we are managing hundreds of thousands of products, then we need to deal with outliers in an automated manner. Huber's method is one way of doing this. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you.